Hi guys, welcome to this video and today we're going to be going over A-level biology microscopes. Now this applies to every single A-level biology exam board, so it doesn't matter what exam board you're on, this video is useful for you. This will be a multi-video part topic as microscopes actually does cover quite a few pages in the textbook. So in this video we'll be going over the types of microscopes and the key definitions. The first thing we need to know is what do microscopes do? Microscopes allow us to view specimen, which are things being studied, that are too small to view with the naked eye alone. For example, this bacterial cell, which can be viewed using this light microscope here. Microscopes magnify images to make the specimen appear larger so that it can be studied. Microscopes also have a resolving power. This measures the strength of the microscope's resolution. Magnification is the number of times larger a sample being studied appears relative to its actual size. For example, this microscope here has a magnification of 1,500, which means the specimen appears 1,500 times larger than it actually is. Here we are showing you a set of photographs from microscopes A, B and C. Can you name which microscope A, B or C has the highest magnification based off these images? If your answer is B, well done. Now you also need to know about what resolution is and this is the minimum distance between two points that can class these points as being separate from each other. Here you can see the same sample being studied from different microscopes with different resolutions. The first picture seems to have a low resolution. This is because it's blurred and it's hard to tell apart the different cells. The cells are undistinguishable from each other. The last image has a high resolution. This is because the image is clearer and sharper and it's easier to tell apart the different cells. So they are distinguishable from each other. And now we're going to go on to resolution number and what it actually means with an example. For example, a microscope might have a resolution number of 200 nanometers. This essentially means that 200 nanometers is the minimum distance between two separate points that are seen as separate and distinguishable from each other. If two cells are, for example, 150 nanometers away from each other, they will not be distinguishable from each other and will appear blurred into one another. This is because 150 is lower than 200 and 200 nanometers is the minimum resolution. And now we're going to have a look at expensive versus cheap microscopes. An expensive microscope will have a higher resolution and a higher magnification. And a cheaper microscope will have a lower resolution and a lower magnification. This is a blood smear under an expensive microscope. It's got a high resolution because you can see the individual blood cells and a high magnification. This picture here is obviously from a cheaper microscope. Yes, the magnification is the same, but the resolution is a lot lower as it appears more blurry. Now, there is two types of microscopes that you've got to know about for A-level biology. And one of them is the microscopes that use light and the other are the microscopes that use electrons. Now we're gonna go over the microscopes that use light. The first one is the common light microscope, and the second one is the laser scanning confocal microscope, also known as the LSC microscope. The typical common light microscope, which you should be familiar with from GCSE, consists of the light source, the specimen, the objective lens, and the eyepiece lens, which you look through. Now you don't need to actually know what the laser scanning confocal microscope looks like, but we're gonna add a diagram so it helps. It consists of a small beam of light, which is a laser and the sample. Now we will look at the things in common with all light microscopes. So this consists of our common light microscope from GCSE and our LSC. They use light to observe the specimen. Specimens can be dead or alive. This is because compared to electron microscopes, no vacuum chamber is used and vacuum chambers have no air. They are relatively easy to use compared to electron microscopes. They do produce colored images. This is because they use light. And as you know from GCSE, light consists of wavelengths of different colors. This is why it produces a colored image. And they have a lower magnification and resolution compared to electron microscopes. 
Now we're going to be comparing the light microscope to the laser scanning confocal microscope. First, the laser scanning confocal has a slightly higher resolution than the light microscope. So this means it will produce slightly clearer images. The light microscope will produce 2D images, whilst the LSC will produce 3D images. This is due to the lasers from the LSC hitting the specimen at different times and at different points and over time creates a 3D image. The LSC also produces fluorescent images due to the laser and the light microscope does not produce fluorescence but it does produce coloured images still. So now we're on to electron microscopes and there's two types you need to know about the transmission electron microscope, otherwise known as the TEM, and the scanning electron microscope, also known as the SEM. You don't need to know about what electron microscopes look like. All you need to know is that it consists of electrons, the sample, and the vacuum chamber which it's in, which has no air, which is the reason why the organism needs to be dead. Now you need to know the things in common with all electron microscopes. Now the first thing is they use electrons to observe the specimen. The specimen must be dead as a vacuum chamber is used, which has no air. The reason a vacuum chamber is used is because the electrons do not want to collide with molecules from the air. They are harder to use relative to light microscopes. They produce black and white non-coloured images because electrons do not consist of light and no light is used. Lastly, they have a higher magnification and resolution compared to light microscopes. Now we're going to be comparing transmission electron microscopes to scanning electron microscopes. A transmission electron microscope has a higher resolution and magnification and a SEM has a lower resolution and a lower magnification. A transmission electron microscope can have a magnification of up to a million. A TEM is used to view inside cells and an SEM is used to view outside of cells on their surface. A good way to think about it is that the S in SEM could stand for surface. Transmission electron microscopes also produce 2D images and scanning electron microscopes produce 3D images. Now that's it for the actual content of this video. Now could you try some of these practice questions slash activities and give it your best shot? And these are the answers. That's it for this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If you have any comments to make, then make it down in the comment section below. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel and have a look at our channel and see if we post any more A-level content about any of your other subjects. Bye-bye.